Hello and welcome back to my channel. In today's session, we will look at some scenario based interview questions as part of your AWS IAM uh, interview. And these questions will test your real world understanding of the uh, IAM service on AWS. So whether you are preparing for an interview or you're just looking to enhance your skills on uh, uh, IAM service, then these questions are perfect for you. Once again, before I start off with the session, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. So let's get started with this. The first question I have is you want to allow your team to have access to Amazon S3, but you want to restrict their ability to delete objects. How would you implement this? So for this, we will basically create an IAM policy. So here is an example of the IAM policy that uh, you will need to create. So this policy will grant uh, so you can see effect is allowed. So we are allowing uh, the users or any users uh, to whom we will be attaching this policy. So they will get a uh, list bucket access, get object access, put object access. But then uh, we'll, not, we'll need to uh, uh, block delete permission. So we will need to have one more um, effect over here and we are uh, denying it. And here we are denying the action which is to delete the object. So this policy we just need to attach it to your IAM group or the role for your team and they will get the necessary permission. So this is how you can um, uh, protect your objects from uh, deletion. The next question we have is you need to grant an external consultant temporary access to a particular EC2 instance without sharing any long term credentials. How would you do this? So for this, we can make use of IAM roles and STS. So STS, it stands for Secure Token Service. So we can make use of this STS to generate uh, temporary uh, credentials and using that we can grant temporary access. Um, so we will need to basically create an IAM role and we will need to attach the necessary EC2 permissions to that role. Then we will need to configure a trust policy to allow that consultants AWS account or the identity provider and then issue this temporary security credentials using the assume role API. So basically, uh, what will happen here is the role will be created with the necessary permissions and uh, the consultant will assume this role uh, which will provide the temporary uh, credentials to access the EC2 uh, services based on the permissions that you have defined. The next question we have is you have an IAM user who accidentally deleted some important data from your S3 bucket. How can you set up a policy to prevent users from deleting objects in the future? So for this, we can implement either an S3 bucket policy or an IAM policy. And this policy should explicitly deny the delete object action. Uh, you can also enable MFA delete on the uh, bucket to basically have an extra layer of protection. And this will ensure that only privileged users who have MFA can delete the object. So, you know, any users who do not have MFA, they will not be able to delete the objects. But then having the policy will make sure that the user do not get the access to uh, delete the objects on your S3 bucket and that way you can protect your uh, objects. Uh, in S3 you have or you also have the option of uh, um, um, protecting your objects from deletion, accidental deletion, you can enable that also. But from an IAM side, you can set up the policy which will deny the access. The next question we have is your organization uses different AWS accounts for different teams. How do you manage permissions across these accounts for a central auditing team? So for this, we can implement a cross account IAM role. So in each of the AWS account, you will need to create a role that will grant read only access to the required resources and then specify the central auditing account as the trusted entity in the roles trust policy. So the auditing to team can then assume this role from their account and they can log into the other account and you know look at the information whatever they want to do the auditing and everything can be done and then they can come back to their own account. So that's basically how you can give the access. The next question we have is you need to allow an IAM user to access both EC2 and S3 service but only from a specific IP address range. How can you enforce this restriction? So for this, we will create an IAM policy and in the IAM policy, we will be using the condition key to specify the IP address from where the action can be allowed. So here, if you can see, we are 
uh, allowing uh, the action and we are allowing the action on the EC2. So basically all actions on EC2, all actions on S3. But then if you see the condition, we are restricting it to an IP address, which is this IP address. So any request that comes only from this IP address is allowed to take action on this. Uh, if not, they won't be able to uh, take action. So that's basically how you can uh, restrict access from a particular IP address. The next question we have is how can you ensure that IAM users are forced to rotate their access keys regularly? So for this, we can make use of IAM access analyzer and or we can also set up a CloudWatch event rule which uh, triggers every time there is an access key which is older than um, the set period. Let's say 90 days is the standard that we follow. So we can configure Lambda to disable old access keys and then send notifications to the IAM users to change their keys to generate new keys. Uh, that's basically how we can make sure that users are rotating their keys and uh, uh, they're not keeping the keys for longer duration. So generally it's a standard practice that we follow. So either have a CloudWatch event rule which triggers the Lambda function. So Lambda function will delete the old keys or disable the old keys and send out the notification to the user that they need to generate new keys. Um, or we can also make use of the IAM access analyzer to um, uh, take the necessary actions. The next question we have is how can you restrict an IAM user uh, to accessing only a specific DynamoDB table and nothing else. So for this we can create an IAM policy. So this is how the IAM policy looks like. So we are uh, allowing and the action that we are allowing is get item, put item, scan and query on the DynamoDB. But then since you want to restrict the access only to a specific DynamoDB table, in the resource we will be specifying the ARN of that particular table okay so that way we can restrict access to a user only to a particular DynamoDB table and nothing else so in this case so let's say uh, your table name is example we're allowing all these actions only on that particular table and nothing else the next question we have is you need to track which IAM user made a specific API call in AWS how would you do this so when we talk about auditing in AWS, we can make use of cloud trial for this. So we can make use of this service to track and log all the API calls that are made by uh, any resources or uh, services or also your IAM users. So this cloud trial logs will show uh, the complete information as to you know which user uh, performed the action, when the action was performed, from where the action was performed, like you know whether a bucket was created or a bucket was deleted uh, when that action was taken all this information will be available and we can use this as our auditing tool to uh, understand what is happening when it happened uh, who made those changes and all that information the next question we have is how do you prevent im users from launching ec2 instances outside a particular instance type let's say t2.micro so for this again we can define an IAM policy with the condition key so here is the IAM policy that you can define so we are allowing the action we are allowing is to run EC2 instances only and then the condition would be only if the instance type is t2.micro they can launch EC2 instances so if they choose any other instance type they won't be able to launch the instances so we can use this policy to uh, restrict uh, the instances that can be launched by your users. The next question we have is you want to enforce MFA for IAM users when accessing the AWS management console. How do you implement this? So again for this we can create our IAM policy. So here if you see uh, we have this policy which denies all the actions on all the resources if um, the MFA authentication is not available. So we can use this to make sure that if your MFA is not enabled, you won't be able to do anything. You won't be able to perform any actions. So this will enforce that all the users must enable MFA for their account. Only then they will be able to perform actions on the AWS account. The next question we have is how can you automate the process of revoking all access for an IAM user when they leave the company? So for this, we can make use of uh, AWS Lambda and CloudWatch events. So uh, whenever an event like let's say a termination event is uh, triggered, um, this event will trigger a Lambda function. 
and this lambda function in turn will go and disable the user's IAM account, remove all the access keys of that users and detach all the policies from the user. So CloudWatch event will look for that particular event and that in turn will trigger the lambda function and lambda function will go and take all the necessary actions for us to remove uh, all the information related to that user from the AWS account. So this way we can automate uh, the process of removing the uh, resources related to a particular user who is uh, who has left the company or is about to leave the company. The next question we have is how would you allow an IAM user to manage EC2 instances only in specific regions? So again for this we will be defining the IAM policy and we will make use of the condition. So here is the IAM policy we have. So we are allowing and the action we are allowing is for the EC2. So we are allowing all the actions and the condition. So this is where we are checking for the region. So let's say you want to allow the access in US East one region. So uh, you will be using this condition. So if this condition satisfies, if the user in this particular region, only then allow them to work with the EC2 service. If not, do not allow any other actions if they are in any other region. So we can make use of this policy. The next question we have is how do you restrict access to specific tags on an EC2 instance? So again for this we make use of the conditions uh, in the IAM policy. So here in this case if you see we are looking for the resource uh, tag. So if this tag matches we will be allowing the actions. If not we will not be allowing the actions. So mostly we make use of the conditions. So based on the conditions if the conditions satisfy we are allowing the access. If not we are not allowing the access. The next question we have is you need to ensure that only IAM users with a certain tag, let's say department, can access a particular S3 bucket. How would you do that? So again for this we define our IAM policy and um, uh, in the conditions we will be defining the request tag. So only the request tag is um, a department which has the value as finance. Uh, we will be allowing the actions on the S3 buckets. You can also define which S3 bucket you want to uh, allow the actions. So if um, it has any other tags we are not allowing the action so that's basically how we can control um, access only you know if the users tag are matching the required tag the next question we have is how do you allow an IAM user to assume multiple roles in different AWS accounts so for this we will be creating an IAM policy and uh, this will allow the user to call the assume role which is basically using the STS for uh, uh, specific roles in other AWS accounts and then we will need to add the user's account as a trusted entity in the roles trust policy. So basically uh, create the, the role and then in the roles trust policy we will need to trust the user account which will allow the user to uh, assume the role which will give them the temporary credentials and then uh, log into the other AWS accounts and work with that AWS account. So that's basically how we can allow a user to work with uh, uh, multiple AWS accounts by making use of your uh, um, IAM rules. And that brings us to the end of our some scenario based uh, AWS IAM interview questions. I hope you found this helpful and feel more prepared for your next interview. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more um, uh, content. Uh, hit the bell icon to stay updated on future videos. Drop your questions or any suggestions in the comments section. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.